Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the new screen recording features of QuickTime 10. So in episode 287, the one major new feature of QuickTime 10 I didn't talk about was the ability for it to take video captures of your screen. In other words, capture your screen and all the movement of the windows, the mouse, things that change. Let's go and take a look at how that works in QuickTime 10. So to start screen recording, you want to go to QuickTime Player. Make sure you're running QuickTime 10, not QuickTime 7, which should also be there with Snow Leopard. And then you want to do File, New Screen Recording. You come with this little window here. It's going to give you some options underneath this triangle. You can choose which microphone you're going to use to record. It's going to record the audio from that microphone, but it will not record the sounds that are coming from your Mac. Also, you can choose the quality. Medium will compress the video more. You can choose where to save the file to. And you, to start, press the red Record button. It's going to tell you that to stop recording, you've got to use this Stop button up here, or you can press Command, Control, Escape. You hit Start Recording, and it clears that away. And now you can go ahead and do various things in your Mac, like say, open a Finder window, uh, go to Safari, uh, navigate around to different pages, do anything you want, move your cursor around. And when it's time to stop, you press the Stop Recording button here. It will then go back to QuickTime 10, and it will open up the movie that you've seen. Now let's shrink it a bit by hitting Command minus so we can get this into a smaller window. And we can scroll along here and see that it's actually recorded everything that we've done on the screen like that. Now there's some restrictions to what you can and can't record. For instance, if you bring up DVD player and play a DVD, you'll notice that it's just a gray rectangle where you normally you'd be seeing the video. It doesn't let you record the DVD content. Now that we have this video here in QuickTime 10, we can go ahead and save it. So you can use all the different options like Save As, and you can choose different options what format to save it in. And you get plenty more options here because this is high resolution video. You can actually save it all the way up to 1080p here, or you can go ahead and basically save it as an original movie, which will save it in full resolution. You can also go ahead and share to iTunes, MobileMe, or YouTube. Go back to episode 287 to see some of the different saving options that you've got. For instance, if you go and you save it for a web page, you're going to get three different versions of it, and the appropriate one will play back on the appropriate device, like, say, a very small version for the iPhone, a much larger version for Safari on your computer. So previous to QuickTime 10, people like myself have been able to use screen captures in tutorials using third-party software. So for years, for instance, I've used Snaps Pro, which allows you to capture just a portion of the screen and has a lot more features than QuickTime 10 does. In addition to that, a more advanced program called ScreenFlow allows you to capture video of yourself talking in, say, a corner, as well as the screen at the same time. Also, a very popular piece of Windows software, Camtasia, just came to the Mac, and that also has a ton more features than what QuickTime X has. There's also one called Jing Project, which is a free utility that allows you to do quick screen captures with some really interesting features. So while the screen capture utility in QuickTime 10 is interesting, it's not really very useful as compared to any of these third-party tools. It's maybe something you could do to just capture some behavior on your screen or make a quick video to show somebody how to do something, something like that. But if you want to get serious about screen captures and creating tutorials, you're probably going to want to try one of these pieces of third-party software. That's it for now. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.